Alright, so we have carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, we talked about metabolism in general, but now we're going to talk about uh, carbohydrate metabolism, how we get, how we break down uh, the carbohydrates. And the, uh, one of the main ways of doing that is through glycolysis. So we're going to focus on that in this lecture. Glycolysis is the metabolic pathway by which glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate, chemical energy in the form of ATP, and NADH reduced coenzymes that are also produced. The conversion to pyruvate is oxidation without oxygen. That's anaerobic. If oxygen is involved, then it's aerobic. The uh, oxidizing agent uh, in this uh, metabolic pathway will be NAD uh, plus, which will be reduced to NADH. There are 10 steps in the process. Each step is enzyme catalyzed. And there are two stages, the six carbon stage, and then uh, which will be steps one through three, and then three carbon stage, which will be steps four through 10. Okay. So we have, the, uh, let's start with the six carbon stage. We'll have to, that's where we start. And in the corner here, I'm putting uh, the structure of pyruvate. And it's on every page, just so we see where we're heading, because we're gonna go from here to here. The carbons that are part of the glucose end up as carbons over here. Uh, so let's like, take a look here. We have glucose, and we have uh, through the uh, enzyme hexokinase, we uh, attach a phosphate to the carbon six, and we produce go from glucose to glucose six phosphate. Now this reaction requires energy because we're we're stripping phosphate and energy out of the ATP to attach it here. And the main purpose of this step is to, for this phosphorylation, is to trap the glucose within the cell due to its charge. Glucose being such an important biomolecule uh, is something that can easily uh, shift back and forth through the cell membrane. But if we want to work with it, we got to we got to keep it in the cell long enough for it to find its way through this process. So by attaching the phosphate, we also are, which is this piece with a circle around it, if you recall from earlier lectures, is this form. And uh, once it's attached, it creates this charge on there that's very difficult. Uh, we'll make this whole uh, species very difficult uh, as far as a movement through the cell wall or cell membrane, I should say. Okay. So again, just pyruvate up here. I might put it off screen sometimes, but that's where we're headed. So we have glucose 6-phosphate, and through the enzymatic action of phosphoglucose phosphoglucoisomerase. So we're just changing its structure uh, and we create fructose 6-phosphate. Now notice that uh, now we have two uh, carbon above here on this end, carbon above the ring on this end. It's looking more symmetrical. Still doesn't look anything like this guy, but it is definitely more symmetrical, which is what, the, uh, what we're after. Carbon 1 is no longer part of the ring. And this oxygen, instead of being off to the side here, is now in the center. Just a little added symmetry there, and to so each of these steps. Sometimes the uh, an individual step. There's really not too much to say about it because it's it's definitely a reaction that's happening with an enzyme. But it's it's really you have to see two or three steps in a row to see uh, what is actually going on. But you can see that there's an added symmetry here. Step three: the phosphorylation using ATP. Again, energy must have gone in because we used ATP and it turned into ADP. So the ATP is a source of phosphate and energy. The fructose 6-phosphate uh, attaches, uh, or the uh, enzyme phosphofructokinase attaches a phosphate to the fructose 6-phosphate, making it fructose 1,6-biphosphate. So now look at that. we have a lot more symmetry here. Not quite perfect symmetry because of these OH groups are not on the same side, but, but we definitely are looking much better as far as the symmetry of the system. And since we have six carbons here, and we want three, it seems like we'd want to split this in half to get to our three carbons so that we eventually end up with pyruvate, which has one, two, three carbons. So making it symmetrical probably is a good idea. Okay, now we're into the three carbon stage. Let me get this out of the way. And so we have uh, the fructose. Now that we know that the rings can open up, and they do. Um, and once it's in the straight chain or open chain form, see a lot of symmetry here. And, and what we're going to do is just slice right through 
and break the bonds with aldolase as the enzyme, creating dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So it's just dihydroxyacetone with a phosphate group on there. We don't have to specify which number because it would be either side, and this, this one carbon in the center couldn't accept a phosphate. So plus glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So it's unsymmetrical. Pretty close. They each have three carbons, but there's, and starting to look more like this guy over here. And you can see of the two, which one looks more like the pyruvate, looks like this guy does, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So if we had, and in a bio, uh, biochemical system, we want to keep things as simple as possible. We don't want, don't want to have to, to work on both of these at the same time. So if we can shift one into the other, and as the next step, which is what we'll do, then we, we end up with just one molecule. Which one would we want? The one that's probably closer to the pyruvate in structure. And that's what we see. And make sure that, yeah, no delays. So you should know these enzymes as well. I think I'm mentioning them each time, but each step has its own enzyme. So we have, now, forget about the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate that we made. That one's all set to go for step 6. But this dihydroxyacetone phosphate, that's not looking quite right yet. So we use an enzyme, triose phosphate isomerase, to change into the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay, looking pretty good. we got that phosphate on there, not quite the bonding that we're looking for. Uh, the that carbonyl group is not on the right carbon, but getting closer. Then we have an important step here because of that NAD+. The glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, This is the oxi uh, step 6 is the oxidation and phosphorylation using phosphate. So we have the inorganic phosphate ion, NAD+, which is in the oxidized form. So it's going to be reduced, which means it's going to oxidize this group. And we can see that with the en enzyme, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. If we're taking hydrogens away from something, then we're oxidizing it. So, And this is what we're oxidizing. This must get reduced. And we can see over here, this is the reduced form. We've seen this before. And we've created 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Uh, and the important thing here, I ran out of room. I tried this twice to get it all on one sheet, but this is the best I can do. So the name's up here. But you can see that we have this wavy line for the phosphate. That's a high energy bond. This one is a phosphate bond too, or that's a phosphate there that's bonded to the system, but it's, it's at a lower energy. This is the guy that's going to be reacting. Or this side is going to react uh, much more likely uh, down the line. Uh, so we have seven. This is a phosphorylation of ADP. So we're, we, have this high, we have this phosphate, high energy bond, and we have uh, the in the one three. Sorry, the uh, yeah. So with the one three, oops, this phosphoglycerate um, will give up its phosphate group to the ADP to create ATP through phosphoglycerokinase and create the three phosphoglycerate. And so getting very close to the structure of the pyruvate that we're after. Mm -hmm. Step eight is isomerization, the three phosphoglycerate through phosphoglyceromutase uh, becomes two phosphoglycerate. And we've moved that, that oxygen from the end and the, and the phosphate uh, to, the, uh, to the central uh, center carbon. And then in step nine, we have the dehydration, the two phosphoglycerate uh, through the use of the enolase, produces phosphoenol pyruvate, and that enol, the en, is the double bond there uh, that we've created, plus water. And then the final step is phosphorylation of ADP to get rid of that phosphate, and that's how we get rid of the, we have a phosphate on our, one of our species, we want to get rid of it, we shift it uh, off uh, uh, onto an ADP, uh, which turns into an ATP, and this is uh, through the use of the pyruvate kinase. So phosphoenol pyruvate becomes the pyruvate. And there we go. Hopefully I've drawn it. Yep. And that is the deal. So each of these steps is getting a, took us closer and closer until uh, to the, the shape of the pyruvate, until we actually had it. And then here's the net equation, overall equation. Glucose comes in. There's two NAD+. Plus. 2 ADP, and then 2 phosphate, inorganic phosphate ions, roaming around solution. We create our 2 pyruvate, our 2 NADH, and 2 ATP. And then 
H plus and water. But these are the main components here that we're interested in. High energy here, we have the pyruvate in a, a carbon-3 form that is ready to be used uh, well, when we talk about the fates of pyruvate. And then we have the ATP high energy and the, and the NADH as well.